Okay, so I've done a little bit of research on this board and the company that made it, and it's uh, kind of interesting. So this board is made uh, by a company called DTK, uh, and DTK was founded in 1981 in the UAE, so the United Arab Emirates, uh, which is not something you see a lot these days. I mean, when's the last time you saw a piece of tech that came from the UAE? Uh, so it's great to see. And uh, as the company saw success uh, making its XT clones, which is what this is, um, they started uh, moving to Taiwan. And uh, the company seemed to kind of be active until maybe 1998. Uh, so yeah, you know, there's not much to this thing. Um, unlike a, a modern PC, you can kind of see uh, all the parts and look up most of the data sheets. So uh, let's start here. Of course, this is our uh, main CPU, the AMD P8088-1. Uh, uh, this is a math coprocessor slot for the 8087. Uh, a couple of dip switches to set up uh, if you're using the coprocessor and kind of the RAM setup. Uh, this thing is maxed out in the RAM. Uh, this is kind of cool. If you look at uh, these RAM chips, Look, there's a little American flag uh, on most of them. Uh, made in the US RAM, how about that? Anyway, moving right along. Uh, these are just some buffers and drivers all the way around here. Uh, the LS244s uh, dot, the, dot the board. They're just uh, line bus drivers. Uh, over here we've got our two crystals uh, for turbo mode. So for normal mode, we've got a simple color burst, 14.31818 uh, uh, megahertz uh, crystal. That's divided by three, and that gives you uh, your just under five megahertz for normal mode. And then you've got your 30 megahertz crystal over here, which is activated in turbo mode, and that's divided by three again. That gives you your 10 megahertz. Um, let's see what else is going on here. Oh, okay, so. Uh, I think this one here is your DMA controller. Uh, this one, I don't think I was able to find much information about. Um, I think it's an interrupt controller. Then you've got a timer. Uh, this is the uh, BIOS chip. Uh, you can see the DTK logo on there. And that's fundamentally it. Uh, this thing down here is the turbo jumper. In this position it runs at 10. And this uh, position runs at what a four point whatever it is, um, but I was right. There was is indeed a key combination. So you can either hook this up to a switch, or hit Control Alt uh, minus, and that will toggle your turbo, uh, which is quite neat. Here's the uh, company website, which is still up at dtk.com.tw, and. Uh, uh, there's a little bit of name confusion going on, but anyway, this, uh, this is apparently where they operate or operated. Huh. Best viewed in IE4 or 5. I don't think so. Uh, if you look at the company history around here, it started up in 1981 with 15 grand and 8 employees. The next year they got 337 grand and kept expanding. Apparently they developed their DTK BIOS, and the next year uh, they decided to use uh, this other BIOS, which is kind of amusing. Uh, eventually they made some Pentium 2 stuff, but that's the end of the road there. You can still apply for jobs. Send your resume there. Okay, so let's have a look at these cards. Let's start with the most obvious one. This is just a, uh, a Seagate controller card for the hard disk. It has a BIOS uh, over here, and uh, that's about it. Crystal 20 megahertz over there, and uh, the disk connections here. This is a bit more of an enigma. Um, it is clearly a general purpose I.O. card, uh, but I couldn't find much information, let alone a uh, model number on here. Um, but yeah, there's a UART here, space for an another one. Um, this looks like a parallel port and a game port. 
game port. It says right there. This one's not listed. Uh, let's see, what else is interesting? This is a real-time clock. Uh, interesting that the battery still has its uh, insulation here, so, yep. And uh, this uh, Zilog part is a floppy disk controller, very common. Now here comes the sticky bit. Alright, so this graphics card here, it's just a VGA uh, device, and uh, I'm pretty darn sure this is not original to the computer. Um, this is much more modern. Uh, 1991. Uh, I don't know if you can see that because of the glare. And uh, that's nice and all, but the problem is, is that my suspicion from before uh, that the uh, the display isn't hooked up to anything uh, is true. Uh, if you recall, this cable here wasn't connected to anything at the beginning uh, when I first opened the case. Uh, so clearly, someone's decided to just whack a VGA card in there and uh, call it good, which has left this poor little screen completely uh, unloved. For some reason, they left the power connector on there. Uh, that's a darn shame, because uh, I don't know really what I'm going to do about this to get it back up and running. Uh, I suppose I'll have to find the original card, but good luck with that. Uh, maybe it'll come up one day. Uh, but we might as well take this uh, LCD panel apart and uh, see what's in it. Uh, that might lead us to a possible solution. Uh, or, I don't know, we could make this into some sort of uh, arcade cabinet or something, hook up a Raspier to this, and that seems kind of lame, doesn't it? Alright, so here's the LCD and it's a standard Epson part. Uh, at least it looks to be that way. Uh, there's a little board, I guess having the power supply and the contrast adjust adjustments. Uh, it's pretty clearly a parallel interface job. Um, should be pretty easy to reverse engineer if I wanted to. Uh, this is kind of funny. Can you see what it says? It's another one of those, this is a protective label. I'm just gonna remove this and uh, see what it reveals. A whole lot of nothing. That's definitely aliens. Alien writing. And here's a little interface, board, contrast, some sort of switch. I haven't been able to figure out what it does, but maybe backlight control or something, but I flipped it and it didn't seem to do anything, so there's that. Not much going on there. I'm not going to take this board out, this main one, because it's just going to be the LCD. Okay, I've covered about everything I wanted to cover for the electronics. The next video will be looking at the software that came on the machine, and the video following that will be reverse engineering the LCD and uh, getting that working. Thanks for dropping by. See you on the next one. Bye.